before the sun comes up. You think you were in a lockdown. Are you in a lockdown? We are too. At least we know how it ends. It must end before the sun comes up. Are you wearing a mask? We are waiting that we'll be forced to wear a mask. So that you don't see our faces. So that you don't see who you are killing. Not really looking forward to it. You are looking out for loved ones. We are looking for our lawyer. I was just doing my job, really. Now, I am an accessory to murder. Prisoner 3. The man who had one job. I swear upon Allah that I shall speak the truth and nothing but the truth. I plead guilty that I was a cleaner. I plead guilty that I couldn't find a better job. I plead guilty that I couldn't get a job where I could say no. I should have known when they asked me to buy the biggest plastic sheet that was available in the bazaar. A very, very big plastic sheet. You could say that it was a procurement job. Why is a lowly cleaner tasked with going to bazaar, official cash in hand, and asked to buy a big plastic sheet? A sheet to cover not only the floor of a big room, but its walls as well. Now I know, they were worried about the expensive carpets and the murals on the walls, a hand-woven map of the Muslim Ummah. I clean floors, dust the walls and take out the garbage. The expensive murals I wasn't even allowed to clean because they were holy and although I am a Muslim, but not Muslim enough to be allowed near these murals. I brought a big, thick plastic sheet. I have a receipt. They said, cover the floors and the walls and leave.
I did what I was told. Then I was asked to take back my sheet. My sheet, I worried. I couldn't tell them that it was their sheet. I only bought it with their money. I took back a big, thick, bloodied plastic sheet. I folded it carefully so that not to spill anything on the expensive carpets or the floors. I didn't know what had happened in that big office. But I know that a bone saw does its job and splatters a lot of blood. I saw the news just like you did, or newspapers. Big countries almost went to war, but then settled. Killers were flown out and forgiven. Families kissed the hand. Now in the cell they are saying chop chop after Friday prayers. I don't understand what the judge says. My counsel gives me benign smiles and says your family will be compensated. That's the best you can do. You, he said, are an accessory to a murder. Not any murder, an international murder that almost caused a war. How can you plead innocence when they have your fingerprints all over a plastic sheet full of blood? Your DNA, poor victim's DNA, all on the same sheet. It's locked and sealed. What does it matter if you were not in that room? People have cell phones in the jail, but I can't even call my family. I want them to know that I'm not a killer. I'm sure they know that. I want to tell them not to listen to the talk of compensation money. Why should I get punishment for a crime that somebody else committed? There are rallies in 35 countries demanding justice. It's the international conscience they are going to satisfy. They will probably not release your picture, not of the actual execution. My lawyer, who is actually their lawyer, assures me. Because if they release a picture of your beheading, that might remind people of the murder that you are an accessory to. It might remind them of bone saws and big plastic sheets. International conscience is very sensitive. A head in black sack is what it wants. Not your naked, miserable face. Not your pleading eyes that say, I didn't do anything. I'm only a cleaner. They'll get me a delay. A cell phone has been promised. Tell your family to take the money. There are still a lot of Fridays left in the calendar.